friends, welcome to another episode of Making Disciples. My name is Chris Rogers and I am your host. And I'm so pleased that you've chosen to give me a little bit of your time today as we continue thinking and reflecting together on what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? How do we live out and do the things that Jesus did? If you're new to the podcast, it's so lovely that you have uh, found us today. Don't forget you can subscribe so that every week you can get hold of the next uh, episode. Uh, so please be doing that. If you enjoy the podcast, then uh, it is possible now to support us by buying us a coffee and supporting the podcast with a cup of coffee. I'm sat here now with a cup of coffee that one of our listeners uh, paid for. Uh, so I'm recording this while sat here drinking a coffee that one of you guys have paid for to do that. Just go to the link. You'll see that in the show notes. Now, today's episode uh, comes from a listener of the podcast that uh, reached out and said, Chris, I uh, love the podcast. Uh, just want to know, I feel like I'm trapped in spiritual procrastination. What do I do? I feel like I'm trapped in spiritual procrastination. I love that phrase. What a great way of putting it, spiritual procrastination. There is a danger that we become trapped in just thinking about our faith and not moving it into a form of action. Uh, so it becomes all about uh, me learning more and knowing more and thinking about how I might go about doing it, but never actually doing it. Uh, there was some research that came out a couple of years ago. I think it was the Barna Group, and they said that 20%, this was American population, so this doesn't translate everywhere, but I, 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 I guess it's the same, but uh, 20% of the population are trapped in uh, procrastination. Uh, and I think they had uh, dis you know, described it as it, like chronic uh, procrastination, 20%. And then, then they just said, you know, 75% of the population would say that they procrastinate regularly. So what is procrastination? Procrastination is the action of, of being essentially trapped and postponing doing something because you, you, ju you just need to uh, think it through a little bit more. Y you uh, need to just work out what the actions are. Uh, and you know you're doing it, but you do it anyway, and it ends up putting off the thing that you need to be doing. So you can be trapped in procrastination and never getting to do the thing that you think about wanting to do you can procrastinate about going on holiday and never going on holiday you can procrastinate about writing that book and never writing that book and the same comes to your faith spiritual procrastination you spend all your time thinking about what you should do as a christian but you never actually do it uh, so that's what we're going to be thinking about today how do we actually go about doing it so friends i pray and hope that you find this helpful for those of us that are spiritual procrastinators uh, i hope that you find this helpful we're going to jump straight into this episode on spiritual procrastination So let's jump straight in as we think about spiritual procrastination. I just want to link this for a second. And it's a passage that I've linked uh, to discipleship many times. And for me, it's one of the central passages, Mark uh, chapter 8, 34. Uh, Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, now a disciple, Greek mephetes, Hebrew Talmudin, uh, to be a Talmudin or a mephetes, disciple of Jesus, if you want to be my disciple, Jesus says, then you must pick up your cross and follow me. See, Jesus is surrounded at this point by two groups of people. One are fans of Jesus and one is the followers, the disciples. Now, a fan is somebody that loves the teaching of Jesus. They ran all over Galilee to hear the teaching of Jesus. They were the fans of Jesus. They wanted to be where Jesus was. They wanted to wear the t-shirt. They wanted the most up-to-date book and the most up-to-date teaching because they just knew where Jesus' teaching was. It made them feel good. They enjoyed it. They appreciated it. They were inspired by it. But this group of people hadn't transitioned yet from being a fan of Jesus to a follower of Jesus. Now, a follower of Jesus is somebody who actually goes where Jesus is going, ultimately gets sent off to go and do the stuff that Jesus did. Now, what is the difference between the two? Well, part of it is 
sacrifice. The, the, the fans had not given themselves fully over to the way of Jesus. The fans of Jesus loved the teaching of Jesus. It made them feel good to be around the teaching of Jesus, but they'd not surrendered yet to this way of life. And that's ultimately one of the struggles of being a disciple. Uh, are you, this is a question for you now, are you a disciple of Jesus or are you a fan of Jesus? And that's a difficult challenge that we all have, but it really is at the heart of Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 8, 34. If you want to be my disciple, then pick up your cross and follow me. We have to surrender, we have to die to ourselves and follow Jesus and start doing the stuff that Jesus did. And there's a danger that uh, that it's lack of surrender for some of us, it may purely be procrastination. We've got trapped in the listening to and enjoying and appreciating the teachings. And we are struggling to activate and walk in uh, the way of Jesus. We, we struggle in to move beyond what we're told to do into actually doing it. We end up procrastinating, spiritually procrastinating, thinking about, uh, actually putting it into practice but never actually doing it you might think there you, you know you may sit there thinking about how you may share your faith but actually when it comes to it you don't actually do it you procrastinate on it but you don't do it you may come up with some great plans for a, for a very spiritual prayer life you procrastinate on it you think on it but you never actually activate it and it's the activation that moves us from simply being a fan of Jesus to a follower of Jesus, so to now living and breathing and walking in the way of Jesus. Friends, procrastination steals your productivity and it'll steal from you from the times when you could be productive rather than just doing it, you actually think more about it. So, you know, reading a book on prayer could be a great way of, well, I'm training, I want to learn more about prayer. The best thing you could do is put the book down and actually just start praying. Uh, you can procrastinate in lots of spiritual ways that make it look very spiritual, uh, but you don't actually ever move it into action. Um, so procrastination takes away the physical uh, and spiritual blessings from you. It stops you from actually walking in the stuff. And I'll give you a really good example of this for a moment. So uh, we recently, this is in the last 12 months, started door knocking. I don't know, if, I think I mentioned this in a previous episode but uh we started door knocking a member of our church goes door knocking she knocks on doors and she's hiding from the local church um just out today to connect with the local community uh, and just see if uh, there's anything we can help you with and she looks for a way of actually then sharing jesus in this uh and there's a group of us from church that have been going out every month door knocking and it's really easy we've noticed it's really easy when we arrive together rather than just get, getting on with door knocking we sit there and we talk about for 10 15 minutes like where are we going to go door knocking rather than just going right we're just going to get on with it it really doesn't matter which doors we knock we're just going to go we oh no no we need to think about this we need to you know for a moment and it's very good at creating things that sound very spiritual well, we need to discuss this because we need to, we need to go door knocking where the lord wants us to go door knocking um and i, I don't think that the lord particularly cares because he seems to use every single door that we knock on you know of course god cares that you know I'm being a bit flippant with that. But, you know, the point is you can spend so much time just going to listen to the Lord about what he wants us to do, but never actually then doing the thing the Lord wants you to do. Uh, and, and then you miss out on that physical blessing because every time we've knocked on the door, we've met five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people, multiples here, uh, in an hour when we've gone, we've met multiples of people that we've prayed for, shared the gospel with, felt loved, somehow been able to bring help and solution to their lives. Um so we end up then we miss out on that physical joy of coming back and going, oh, my gosh, that was amazing. So the procrastination stops us from actually doing the thing uh, that we are called to do. Uh, and it really does affect, you know, our achievement levels. Uh, rather than praying, you do another course on prayer, but never actually do prayer. It's actually, it starts to affect what you what you're going to achieve and ultimately it'll affect your fruitfulness you know galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the spirit spiritual procrastination makes us fruitless it stops us from bearing the spiritual fruit uh, because we're just not doing what we're called to walk in and there's a whole bunch of beautiful passages in scripture uh, about procrastination and laziness so proverbs 24 this is just fab but let me just show you this with you uh, the lazy man will plow uh, will not plow because of winter it's just too cold 
it's just too cold. Um, and he will beg during harvest and have nothing. You know, the lazy man, rather than getting out there and actually doing the hard work and plowing the field, well, he's going to go begging others who've done it in the harvest for food. Um, you know, procrastinate. I'm, I'm going to put it off. I'm going to put it off. I'm going to put it off. Uh, Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, do it heartily uh, as to the Lord and not to men. You know, so whatever we're doing, we're meant to be doing it with passion, with heart not with procrastination and laziness. Proverbs 26, 13. I, I start to get the impression, actually, as you read through the Psalms, that there was a lot of lazy people around during the, the Proverbs being written because there's so many of the Proverbs that really speak into this. So Proverbs 26, 13, the lazy man says, oh, there's a lion in the road, a fierce lion there in the streets. I can't go outside. There's a fierce lion in the streets. Um, a lazy man will find any excuse to not do what they need to do. Oh, there's just a lion in the street. I love that. A lazy man essentially will find any excuses to not do what they need to do. We have to ask ourselves seriously, where do we come up with really poor excuses that stop us from actually walking in what the Lord wants us to walk in? I was just way too busy uh, to share this good news with my friends. I was way too busy. Look, if a, if a year goes by and you've been too busy that year to share your faith with a friend, I, maybe you're just way too busy. Or maybe it's just a very good excuse for not doing it. Uh, and I say that, but that's, it's challenging, isn't it? Uh, it is challenging. Uh, I'm just too tired. I was just too tired to pray I was just too tired to go to church I was just too tired to share my faith I was too tired to go and help at the food bank I would connect with that as well weariness and I, I think at the moment I feel life just feels very weary we we're, we're carrying so much because of the last couple of years we're carrying a burden that's almost invisible to us just the weight of the last couple of years, the weight of worry, uh, the constant news stream. Uh, and um, yeah, I think it's that weight of the news of the world because we're so connected now globally. You could keep tracking COVID numbers globally every every half a day if you so wished. And it's just wearisome, just too weary. Uh, I, I have a real problem at my church right now uh, that, that actually volunteering, getting people to serve is really difficult. Cannot for the life of us get people to serve. So it's an even smaller circle of people running everything. Because when people walk through the door, they're just so weary. Just too weary, Chris, to be a welcomer. I can't come and help be on the welcome team at church. I'm just exhausted. I come to church and I collapse in the chair because I'm weary. And, and yeah, we are weary. I think one of the things that I recognise um, is that, you know, when you've been sick, when you've had the flu, for a long period of time afterwards, you, you can be exhausted and you are just battling this low level exhaustion. And it's really difficult. And I, I recognise that for me, if you don't start getting out and doing a short walk every day after you've been sick, uh, it takes much longer to get well because your body just gets more and more sluggish. Uh, and I, I, there is that weariness that's around and we're not kind of walking in to anything new. We're not walking with a new energy and, and we're not getting any better. So, you know, a, a great excuse that is around at the moment, I'm just really weary. Stress. Chris, I'm just carrying so much stress at the moment. Uh, I, you know, just getting through the day is so stressful. Uh, I've not got it in me. I can't, I'm, I'm not able to to do the stuff that I need to be doing. Uh, Chris, I'm just not sleeping. I, I was just too sleepy. I, I'm, I'm too tired. I'm not sleeping that well. Um, so there's all these wonderful uh, lines that we can come up with, like Proverbs 26. The lazy man says there's a lion in the road just can't go out this just this is a line in the street i can't go out it's too dangerous out there uh, you know we, we can come up with lots of good sounding spiritual sounding reasons why we can't do uh what we need to do but we have to check ourselves hang say, hang on is this actually is this actually true 
is this actually true? I had someone recently say to me this line, Chris, uh, I can't help in that particular ministry. It's all to do with serving the poor, uh, serving the poor, really. Uh, I can't help with that ministry. I'm just not wealthy enough. I'm not one of the people at church who's wealthy enough uh, to help with that ministry. And that really stopped, you know, wow, um, I'm not wealthy enough to, to help someone else. And um, it, you can very easily convince yourself that, well, I don't owe as much as somebody else, therefore I've not got as much to help with. Do you know what the smallest penny makes the big, can make the biggest difference in somebody else's life? And uh, it's too easy to, to, to look at what we don't have rather than looking at what we do have. Uh, and actually, whatever you have financially, I'm telling you now, you are one of the wealthiest in the world. You're listening to a podcast. If you've got a device that listens to a podcast, you're in probably pretty much one of the wealthiest of the world. There are, there, there are, you know, you're probably in the top three percent wealthiest of the world if you're able to listen to this podcast for sure. Um, so there's so many spiritual excuses we can come up with. So what's the solution, Chris? What's the solution to spiritual procrastination? Um, number one. I would say this, uh, what one thing can you do this next week that will activate some area of your life? Now, prayer is doing something. Prayer is not procrastination. Prayer is actually doing something. So I would say, what can you do this week to start? activating your prayer life write a list maybe of five things to pray for and then just sit down there and pray and just do it 60 second prayer two minute prayer uh we have a church prayer meeting every week thursday nights it's a very small number of us that turn up what is it your church does once a week uh we do ours on, on zoom which is great fun um what is it your church does once a week that might help you just to start once a month, twice a month, three times a month, start activating prayer in your life. What, what is that one thing? So if you need to activate prayer, then I would say simply write down five things that you need to pray for. Just write down five things. Stick it somewhere. And every day, boiling the kettle, maybe, just pray for those th three things. So I, one of the things I recommend is if you want to start activating your faith, um, do a three, two, one. Uh, it's a six-minute daily ret retreat. You can do this anywhere at any time really uh a three two one is three minutes read your bible two minutes pray one minute listen to god in six minutes you can take a spiritual retreat and it's you don't need to think about it you don't need to uh prepare anything for it you can open your bible just for three minutes read a passage of scripture uh, i would say read a short passage multiple times so in three minutes uh, you can read a, a passage from a gospel probably three times through and just simply ask yourself what do I need to pick up from this passage today two minutes tell God what's going on in your day pray for those five things that maybe you've written down one minute just sit and listen to God is God wanting to say anything to you today um, th that is the first step on the run of the ladder of a spiritual discipline of reading your Bible and prayer now I would say on top of this it's possible now to use prayer as a way of spiritually procrastinating rather than actually activating your faith so it's possible now to use prayer to simply get trapped so it may be that your procrastination is that you're trapped in prayer and reading your bible but you've not actually moved it to doing the stuff so i would say this what one thing this week one thing could you do that would help activate your faith could it be to, to say to somebody uh what can i pray for so i'm often looking for people in my day to say you know what can i pray for let's let me can I just quickly pray now i don't know if you pray or not but i'm just gonna pray for you so I'm, I, I often will say to people uh okay i pray i don't know if you pray can i just pray for you very quickly uh lord thank you for james you know you know the conversation we've just had i want to pray your blessing over him today lord and i pray this thing that we've just talked about lord i place it in your hands lord would he see a miracle in his life because of this uh, prayer and this conversation we've had today in jesus name amen and that's it short sweet i stood outside um my house recently talking to a guy called michael a guy that i know he's struggling with something i said michael can i, can I pray for you he said yeah that, that'd be great um, so I prayed for him. The time I saw him after, he said, Chris, um, that prayer, it worked. I saw an answer. I was like, oh, that's amazing, isn't it? We could, we could do more of those if you like. So, you know, act, you know, having the confidence to say, I'll pray for that. And, and, and let's do that now. Like, you know, it's too easy to say, I'll pray for that and not actually, not actually do it. Can I pray for that? I'll, I'll do it now. I was on the phone to a friend yesterday. They were sharing with me some 
stuff that they're going through. And I said, look, before we go, can I just pray for that? And they went, well, yeah, that'd be great. So we just quickly prayed. Lord, hand this to you. Uh, you've heard the whole conversation, but Lord, these are the bits I remember. Lord, you heard more, but Lord, I place it in your hands. Amen. I got a text from him later in the day. Mate, thank you so much for praying. It just felt so good to know somebody was praying for me. Uh, so activating your faith by actually using prayer to actually pray for somebody and using prayer is a great way of evangelizing you know there's nothing uh, you know nothing better than saying look can i pray for you if god's real then he's going to answer my prayer so what one thing can you do to activate your faith this week and friends it is just a case of you have to do it there is no solution there's no shortcut to just now just doing it set a goal what is the one thing you're going to do today so that's my first thing. The second thing is, I'd say this, bring somebody in on this. You, spiritual procrastination and any form of procrastination when it involves yourself is useless. You need to have somebody else who's going to say, uh, have you done this yet? Have you done this yet? You've not done this yet. Why have you not done this yet? Bring somebody in on that and give them permission. Look, I want you to ask me, have I done this or not? And it's entirely up to you if you're going to be honest because you could lie to them. Yeah, yeah, I did it. I did it. Did it. And it's just rubbish. Uh, it's just not true at all. Um, it's entirely up to you because look, this is about maturing as an adult. You have to take responsibility. So you could lie to them, but like, what 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 is the purpose behind that? But by bringing somebody else in, you're essentially sharing a light onto something you want to see happen. And once that light is there, you are now more likely to do something about it as well. So I had a friend of mine recently say uh, that they wanted to lose weight, but they'd not told anybody. Uh, and because they didn't want people to kind of nag them and they just wanted to be able to get on with it. And I said, well, did 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 it work? Said, no, because I, I, I didn't tell anybody, then I, I just didn't do it. I'm like, well, that's bonkers. But now you've told me, I won't nag you, but I'm going to say, how's that going? I can ask you that, you know, in you know, future weeks, how's that going? So start gradually and invite a friend in is the key two things that I would say. You know, set yourself a goal for something you're going to do uh, and then invite somebody else in to kind of keep check. And that is the easiest way to start breaking the back of that spiritual procrastination. Uh, if your procrastination is around Bible reading, I'm just not doing it. Uh, one of the ways is to start a daily um, reading program. Uh, Bible in one year is a great way of doing it. I often say to people, Bible in one year is still quite a lot, actually. So I would say, why don't you just start by reading the New Testament passages in the Bible in one year? Start there. And that's not me saying the Bible Old Testament is important because it, it really well is. Um, but if you're not reading anything, there's no point in me saying, well, you need to read the New Testament, Old Testament, probably a psalm and an epistle. It's just, it's just too much. So I'd say if you're spiritually procrastinating and you've not started reading your Bible yet, start with the new testament so a couple of other little things uh, i'd just say this keep keep a little record of what you have done you know you could just jot down the things that you have done so you can celebrate the good uh to get moving you've got to put one foot in front of the other so it's quite helpful to remind yourself where you've come from and what you have done and just the other thing i would say is you need to push away distraction it it really is something that is a, a spiritual discipline your mobile phone twitter instagram facebook tiktok these things will do nothing to help you accomplish your spiritual duties or the the, the spiritual things that you want to do these things are going to do nothing but suck your time. Netflix is going to do nothing but suck your time. YouTube is going to do nothing to suck your time. I found myself recently watching a heck of a lot of YouTube, uh, partly because uh, I hadn't been very well uh, and a whole ton of other things. Just start watching trashy Netflix. Um, I decided to search for archaeology that backs up the Bible. Oh, my gosh. That was it moved me away from procrastination into really learning some stuff. That was that that was great. Moved me into start trying to use these things um, in a really helpful way. But I want, I want to say this: you may need to look at what is it that's causing you to be distracted. Is it Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those things? YouTube, Netflix. What is it that's stopping you? from walking in what you need to walk in what is it that's pushing you away and distracting you from what is it that you meant to be doing and it may be that you need to take some time to look at your screen time 
and to make some hard decisions to cut it. And I wouldn't dare to say that we are addicted to our screens, but I probably need to dare to say some of us are addicted to our screens. Uh, our screen time is taking way too much of our attention and is not allowing us to walk in the stuff that Jesus has called us to walk in. So push away the distraction. Again, the only way that you can do this is to let light in and to bring somebody else in on that distraction. Uh, it's too easy to say, oh, I'll keep this to myself, I'm going to do something about this and never actually do anything about it. The only way that you can actually break the back of a distraction is by inviting somebody else in on it. So ultimately, the answer to some of this is to get yourself a mentor or get yourself somebody who is going to speak into this for you and ask you those questions. Uh, what have you done about this? How is that going? Have you been able to resolve this yet? You know, and having somebody that will check in on you. The final thing I wanted to say is this. Uh, one of the ways to break spiritual procrastination is to ask yourself on an evening before you go to bed, uh, what is it you have done that day that has helped you to activate your faith? What is it that you have done to activate your faith and be honest with yourself? Um, the only way you are really going to resolve spiritual procrastination is to get to the point where you have irritated yourself so much that you now yourself are so irritated that you're going to do something about this. Uh, that's only the way that you can do this. It is ultimately down to you. Nobody else can break spiritual procrastination. It, it really is your thing. So a couple of questions for you as we finish. Um, where do you get stuck in procrastination with your faith? Is it around evangelism, sharing your faith? Uh, is it reflecting on how it should influence your life and your behaviours? Is it around scripture? Is it around prayer? Is it around something that's sinful that you just keep doing? You keep procrastinating and I need to do something about it but never actually do it. What is it for you where you get trapped in procrastination? Where is that? So that's the first question. Second question, who can you let in? on this little secret that you have this little thing that you want to break uh, this thing that, that you're not activating who can you let in today to help you in there who could be your mentor who could be the person that just texts you and goes how is it going today who is that person for you that can ask you those difficult questions so friends i pray that you find that helpful I pray that you may stop being like the lazy man who says, there's a lion in the road, a fierce lion in the streets. I love this one. Last one, Proverbs 6. The Proverbs are full of this stuff. How long will you slumber, O oh sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler? your need like an armed man. Uh, I love that little proverb. In other words, uh, you will be poor if you sleep. If you don't work, you will not earn money, you will not have money. Poverty comes to those who are lazy. Uh, and I would say spiritual poverty comes to those who of us are spiritually lazy. So friends, if you want to be spiritually wealthy, rather than bankrupt. What is it that you need to do today to activate your faith? And I'll leave that little thought with you. Friends, until next time, grace and peace.